metabolized omega-3s, DHA and EPA. These things are incredibly important for the brain, the eyes, and the nervous system, especially as it's developing in a fetus or in a child. Mothers, fish oil, omega-3s, mothers-to-be, and in the breast mil- or breastfeeding, because these things come out in the breast milk. If you're, if you're not a vegan or vegetarian, use fish, krill, uh, uh, cod. These are, uh, sh- these are all wonderful sources of oil. You can also eat the fish, of course, and eat the, eat the shrimp. If you're a vegetarian now, over the last year maybe, very recently, there's uh, omega-3 oil that comes from algae and spirulina. V- vegetarians and vegans apparently have no problem eating algae or vegan. That's a whole other story. How come vegans don't mind eating algae? and spirulina and other ocean creatures? That's a good question if you're a vegan. I would wonder about that. But anyway, if you are vegan, most vegans will eat those kinds of things. So you can now get your DHA and EPA. Previously, vegans couldn't do that because DHA and EPA was only really found in fish. Now you can get algae oil, and it's still kind of expensive. But uh, as the technology improves, the production technology improves, you'll be able to get algae oil, and then you'll get your DHA and EPA. Point being, DHA and EPA are really important. Brain, eyes, nervous system, especially in kids and fetuses and infants and and, and, and babies who are breastfeeding. So icosanoids, souped up essential fatty acids. That makes taking your essential fatty acids critical. That means taking them in a balance is important. You want to make sure you have enough of both, three to one, four to one, something like, something like that. In a simplistic way, you could just say your omega-6s are turned into uh, the icosanoids of inflammation and omega-3s are turned into the icosanoids of, infl- of anti-inflammation. But that's very simplistic. You don't want to think about it necessarily that way, although if you're a chemist, it's kind of interesting. From a nutritional supplement standpoint, you want them both and you want them in balance. A very underappreciated source of omega-3s is green leafy vegetables and grasses, particularly wheatgrass, just like algae and spirulina have these omega-3s, algae and spirulina and bacteria and plankton uh, that live on the surface of the ocean. I shouldn't say bacteria, but uh, microbes, single cell organisms that are literally, they're a complete organism, but they're only a cell. You guys, check that out. Single cell organisms, they live on top of the ocean. These things are amazing. They're the size of a cell, which is to say microscopic, but they do everything an animal does. They're called single cell organisms, and they're super, super healthy. Why? Because they have everything you need for life. Remember, we always say, if you eat a life, a living life, you're going to get everything you need for your life. That's why yeast cells, yeast, nutritional yeast is so important. That's why egg cells, eggs are so important. That's why oysters and living foods are so important. That's why wheatgrass is so important although wheatgrass is not an animal cell. And that's why ocean creatures, single cell ocean creatures are so vitally nutritionally, or so vital from a nutritional standpoint. And when it comes to fats, they're packed, loaded with them. But grasses too, and green leafy veggies, these are good sources of omega-3s that are sometimes underappreciated. Arugula in particular is a good source of omega-3s. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back with your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got a couple lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Treatment products, including our Retinol 5% Gel or Truth Serum, made with a whole bunch of premium fat-soluble vitamin C, go to truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com. We also blog uh, skincare. We have a skincare blog up there as well. Uh, that's truthtreatments.com. Okay, 4423660010 is our number. Report. Drug maker was focused on profits, not patients. Oh my God. This uh, bipartisan report from the Senate Finance Committee concluded that California-based Gilead Sciences Incorporated was focused on maximizing revenue for its hepatitis C medications, even as the company's own analysis showed a lower price would allow more patients to be treated. Oh, my God, what a shocker. The stuff costs $1,000 a pill, $84,000 for a treatment for hep C, which is a lifestyle issue, by the way. Surprise, surprise. 
this is a Charles Grassley. He's, uh, he's just, oh my God, he's beside himself that, that Gilead Pharmaceuticals was actually focused on profits, not patients. Oh, and by the way, they have a new drug. That's their first drug, Savaldi. They have a new high-end high version, which is actually $10,000 more expensive, $94,000. Are you kidding me? Do you know, this stuff costs pennies to make, pennies. How can you live with yourself, you guys? Savaldi, Harvoni, Gilead. You're talking about a penny transformed into $94,000. Do the math on that. There is not an industry on the planet that's even remotely close to this kind of gouging. How dare a company even exist like this? And I'm a capitalist. I don't have any problems with that. But come on, you guys. We should be... We should be revolting against these companies by not using their products, by not using their drugs. You don't need these things. Savaldi, Harvoni. If you have hepatitis C, you have a liver problem. If you have a liver problem, you have primarily a digestive problem, but also toxicity issues, and putting more drugs in your body is not the answer. Okay. 844-236-6010. Let's go to Glenn from yesterday. Glenn, what's up, my man? Hey, Hello. Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Uh -oh. Yeah, What's going on? Wow. I called in when you gave the number at the top of the hour. If you had let me know, know that you weren't going to take calls until, like, later, I could have stayed 25 minutes and trying to get stuff done around the house. Oh, just, Glenn. But, Glenn, you're, bumming, okay. you're breaking my heart here, man. I'm so sorry. I, I, I apologize. Uh, well, right, what's yeah, up? I'm, I'm, I wanted to reprise the topic I started calling about yesterday, but when I only got a couple minutes, because it was at the end of a bunch of people with two and three and four calls. You sound like you're so complaining a lot there, Glenn. Do you yeah, complain yeah, a lot? Yeah. Are, you, are you a complainer? Uh, not, no, you're mismanaging. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I think you're mismanaging okay. the calls. Yeah, okay. that, that's actually the issue here. I'll take um, that under advisement. Yeah. Thank you. Well, good. Very good. Good idea. Um, the, uh, about, okay, about the uh, chronic inflammatory process and all that sort of stuff. Okay, basically two ways to fight in excess inflammation or inappropriate inflammation, steroidal or non-steroidal. Um, a, a lot of people up there with chronic inflammatory process that's not good, so they're, um, they're looking for, um, you know, looking for relief, have a tendency to reach for aspirin or uh, ibuprofen. Tylenol, of course, is uh, uh, is not an anti-inflammatory. It's an uh, antipyretic and an analgesic. But um, anyway, so we was calling yesterday about, uh, uh, you know, supplements. Or homeopathic, yeah. homeopathic yeah. stuff that could help. Now, I you mentioned a, num a number of things. You mentioned... Uh, you know, several water soluble vitamins, B's and C's, and then and minerals, magnesium and zinc. Uh, about magnesium specifically, um, uh, you know, magnesium um, carbonates not very uh, utilizable. Uh, magnesium citrate tends to be a little rough on the gut. There is magnesium salicylate, which is uh, historically been sold as Dillon's pill for back pain. So and aspirin. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a topical. I'm talking about, uh, or, you know, orals. The, is Don, um, Don's pills is magnesium salicylate. So, so that's got anti-inflammatory oh, properties. Do you have a, Do you have a background in nutrition or health, or you just kind of you like to read I'm up a, on this stuff? I'm an RN. So. Oh, you're an RN. Oh, I yeah. love it. Love love RNs. Love RNs. That's awesome. Where do you work? A hospital or a doctor's office? I I do private duty home care for special needs kids, CP kids, and stuff. Oh, that's awesome, Glenn. Awesome. So uh, I'm going to run out of time here, man. We're going to have to take a break, and then okay. I'm going to let you go. So ask a question, because I'd love to hear what you... Okay. If you have any questions, um, I'd love to hear. Well, in terms of preferred, uh, I know mag taurate, mag orate are more easily absorbed. Is mag salicylate, um, you know, a, a, good, a good option for, you know, inflammatory pain? And, um, you know, does it supply yeah. a, as a source of magnesium as well? Yeah. It's not a great source of magnesium, but the fact that you get the salicylic acid in there is a benefit. I wouldn't use it as a source of magnesium, that's for sure. Oh, no, but, but, but for the for, for, as a pain, as an end set, it's good though. Okay. As a as a yeah, as a aspirin, a salicylate, a source of salicylate, yeah, it is. It's actually great because you get the magnesium mm -hmm. too. So it's probably as a source of salicylate, it'd be my favorite source of salicylate. Magnesium is ridiculously important as an anti-inflammatory, pain reliever, relaxing kind of supplement, and because it's found in 
in mostly found in, in greens, most most people are going to be deficient in magnesium. Plus, if you know you're not you're not replacing it as you're urinating, you're going to be deficient in it as well. Uh, so magnesium is just an all time great nutritional supplement. And then you get the sal- salicylic acid. So of course you get the anti anti inflammatory benefits. The, the, the taurates and the aromates are pricey though. That's they are pricey, me, but, but they're good. Yeah, they're worth yeah. it. They're worth it. I yeah. like aspartates. Let me tell you why I like aspartates, uh, seeing as how you you know a little, a little bit about this stuff. For the listeners, aspartates, um, uh, citrates, and uh, to, uh, taurates, th- these are different amino acids, not the citric, not the citrate, but they, they take amino acids and they stick them to the minerals. That's called a chelate. And, and this chelated mineral is very handy because it's easy to absorb, number one, and also it's a good source of amino acids. And the aspartate is a nice brain stimulant, although you don't want to go crazy with aspartates, uh, as Dr. Blaylock has pointed out, but a little bit, is it acts like a little bit of a brain stimulant. So I like magnesium aspartate, and I usually look for aspartate where I can where I can find them just to get that oh, okay. that brain burst if you will oh, you don't okay. want to go crazy on it though but a little bit you know give, gives you a little spark aspartates that is okay, okay. good deal Glenn I mean, thanks um, for calling thank yeah you. thank you man thank you. have a, have a great day thanks for calling appreciate it I love RNs man love 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 RNs I remember uh, you know if you if you go to uh, if you are a veteran and you go take the post office exam you get they put you to the front of the line if you're a veteran. If you sign your name and you take your scholastic aptitude test, the SAT tests, and you sign your name, you get 200 points just for signing your name. Well, I always thought that when an RN dies and goes to heaven, she gets 200 points or he gets 200 points if uh, if he said he was an RN. If they, they, they tell the Heavenly Father they're an RN, they get extra 200 points because being an RN is equivalent to being a saint. Not being a doctor, being an RN. And if you've ever been in a hospital, you know. So we love our RNs. Love, love, love our RNs. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Ken in Ohio. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's going on, my man? Brother Ben, I appreciate you so much. I, Thank I've you. followed you for about three years now. I've lost oh. over 100 pounds. Nice. And Oh, commercial. Hey, I no, to... Ken, but I want to hear how you lost the weight, and then we'll, we'll oh. get your questions. Well, okay. thank you so much. Okay. Hang on. I apologize. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844 is our number. If you're on hold, hang tight, and we do have a couple lines open for you if you'd like to get on. 844-236-6010 is our number on The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. All right, we're back on the bright side from the United States National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. Sleep apnea devices lower blood pressure. For those suffering from sleep apnea, the disrupted sleep and reduction of oxygen uh, getting to the brain, the reduction of oxygen getting to the brain can contribute to high blood pressure. No, duh. What have we been saying on the program here, the bright side here for years? Hypertension, high blood pressure, needs to be regarded first and foremost as hypoxia, low blood oxygen. You don't need a sleep apnea machine if you have high blood pressure, though. You can just practice your deep breathing techniques. Do not underestimate the power and importance of good, slow, deep breathing. 15 seconds in through the nose, all the way to the bottom of your belly. Get through that little sticking point at the top of your chest, and then exhaling through the nose, 15 seconds, slowly. Most of us won't be able to do 15 seconds, but it's a great goal to work towards. 15 seconds in, 15 seconds out, through the nose, in through the nose, and out through the nose. All right, Ken in Ohio. Sorry to cut you off there, my man. How'd you lose 100 pounds? Well, I I want to tell you that, but I want to say hello to my friend, Teresa, in Nashville, Indiana, who is a nurse. Oh, and, uh, great. We wish, wish her the best in her health challenges. I'm uh, listening to you, following you uh, uh, to, to the letter. Uh, okay. Mainly the, uh, the crayon and the ketogenic diet, which I live on constantly. I'm a truck driver. I'm looking here in the dash. I have whey protein, raw egg. I have TT, <laughs> osteoacid. That's awesome. That's Glutamine awesome. mean and it's the, uh, ultimate uh, amino acid. I love I, it. But, hey, I'll tell you why, Ken. Why don't you do this for me? Send an email, Ben at ksco.com with your address, and I'll send you out a, a free Beyond Tangy Tangerine on me. I appreciate that so much. You bet. Send ben at ksco.com, put your address and uh, mailing address uh, for the post office, and I'll send it out to you. So what's going on? How can I help you, bro? Well, I, I want to 
ask you a quick question about uh, about fasting and then I, about history. About when I fast, and I basically live on the uh, uh, calorie restriction, alpha nutrition diet, and ketogenic. I don't. Uh, I'm on liquid, but when I fast, uh, do I wake up?